<laughs> Hi, I'm here with Mark Joshua Epstein, and we're in his studio, which is located in Williamsburg, um, with some really beautiful light, like every painter needs. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> and we're here to talk about his recent paintings on um, paper, but we were actually just discussing what that might be, like if it's a painting or a drawing or a hybrid, how do you feel about that? I think for me, they feel like paintings, they're made like paintings, but they are also made on a table, and so um, there are moments of drawing in them, but to me they function like paintings. I think of myself as a painter. Yeah, um, yeah. but it's an interesting thing, like paintings on paper don't really, I don't know, do they exist? Who does them? <laughs> Someone must do them. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and um, like looking at the, the painting, you know, I can see you have all these different types of materials that you're using, and the, it's like a lush, beautiful surface because of the different mediums. And so can you tell us a little bit about what you use? Yeah, so I use the, the larger work now, which for me this is larger work, is done all um, in water-based medium. And so we're talking about uh, watercolor and different kinds of inks. And then these lines are actually um, marker. They're archival markers. Well, they're supposed to be archival. Yeah. Time will tell. <laughs> um, and then something I've gotten really into lately is um, colored pencils and specifically neon colored pencils. So this is colored pencil and then this is also colored pencil. Oh, wow. Um, and I just like that. There's something about that, um, that kind of texture, the paper, it eats up the paper a little bit because the pencils are sharp and so they dig into the surface. Mm -hmm. And so um, I like that kind of thing that happens. And uh, also in my teaching, I use, I draw with colored pencils with children all the time and adults actually. And so last year I thought, what would it be like to incorporate these into my own practice and to actually then be teaching with something I use and I, I know how to use and for me has a kind of more legitimacy somehow. Um, and the neons, they're just really opaque. It's amazing. Like you can get these amazing neons um, with the pencils. Yeah, it almost looks like, um, it almost looks like paint. You know, yeah, a little bit. They are. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Very cool. And you started kind of this work on paper in Mexico uh, at Feral. Yeah, good there? pronunciation. Feral. Yeah, Hi. it just means feral. Feral. Yeah, cool. but it's feral. Um, yeah, I did a residency last year in Mexico City and then got to live in the city for uh, about 10 months total. The residency was about three months. And I started working on paper because I had to, because the space was small and I didn't want to get out the oil paints. And then I started to really love it. And the other side note is art supplies in Mexico City, maybe in Mexico in total, are um, very pricey and all made by brands you've never heard of in your life. Yeah. So it was a, uh, there was an effort to kind of figure out how to have my practice in a way that expanded it but didn't maybe use these paints that I didn't think were that trustworthy. Right. Um, and so paper was kind of a natural, the natural sort of thing to use, I think. And I even, I actually brought down a huge roll of paper, also like a five foot tall roll of paper, and then never used it. I just ended up using this 28 by 38 size the whole time. Well, it looks really good. The size looks really good. And I, I really like seeing, you know, this size next to these. The little guys. Yeah. Yeah. It feels nice and scale wise. Um, I like with these that you have, you, I, you, me, <laughs> that we get to have these zones, like it's mm -hmm. big enough to have zones. So it's like right. a zone of diamonds, zones of other thing, this other sort of kind of squarish diamond. And what I always think with the small ones is that I love making them, but either the zones have to be much smaller or there's just fewer zones. It just functions a little bit differently. Right. Um, you know, and I'm really interested in this idea that like, you have to take it as a whole, really. You can't, there, the, there aren't spaces that aren't, there, there are no spaces that aren't interacting with other spaces. And right. so if you come in on the corner and you travel, you kind of end up at these marker lines really quickly and you get interrupted or um, sort of turned, turned anew somehow. That's very cool, yeah. And it's, it's really beautiful because like, kind of in a way like a paint mark, you know, kind of leads you. I feel like you have the pattern is leading you 
um, around, which is really beautiful. I'm, from my perspective, I'm like, ooh, you know, noticing this. <laughs> I know what you're there. noticing. <laughs> yeah, I totally know what you're noticing. And it's also because the patterns are hand drawn. Yeah. And so um, it's like this idea of taking something that's been mechanically reproduced and putting it back into my own hand so that we allow for these screw ups, really. And the, you know, because a pattern, the idea of a pattern is that it's something whose rules we, we recognize and they just get followed. And then what happens when you start to unfollow them, basically? Um, and also what will happen is I'll work on a pattern like this for a long time mm -hmm. with certain rules in my head, like, oh, this part's going to be this color, and this part's going to be this color. Yeah. And then I'll mess it up, inevitably. And so it's like, OK, wait, I just messed it up. So instead of you know worrying that we messed it up, I messed it up. Like, OK, well, now the pattern has changed. Or maybe now the pattern is irregular or um, kind of more interesting in a way. Yeah, more interesting for sure, I would think so. Um, and it's, it's beautiful, too. Like, there's this wash over these diamonds, so they feel like a little bit like not so clean. <laughs> yeah, like it's, it's all a little dirty. A little dirty. And it's on a toned paper. Oh, cool. um, so they're not on a bright white cold paper. They're on a slightly warmer paper, which I think is important for me. Yeah. And um, we were kind of talking a little bit before about um, the idea of um, the bright colors and what you're thinking about yeah. um, them being aligned with queerness. Yeah. So I don't know if you wanted to talk about that. Sure. Uh, for me, it's really important that they, the work, it sort of comes from a place of queerness. And I am a queer identified artist. And even though the works are non objective and they're not, showing the body and they're not showing some of the tropes of queer art that we've had for decades which i think are very important um is there a way that this can express a kind of queer attitude or a, a kind of gay life or a gay person or a gay body without being uh, representational of the body and i think with abstraction and especially with gesture you know we learned we weren't alive, but we learned in the 50s and 60s to read gesture as sincerity and this idea that if you're making a gestural mark, you feel it. It's like you're thinking it, you feel it, your whole body makes it. And for me, there's some playing around with that and then trying to think about these kind of marks, which are maybe more careful, but they're just as gestural to me. There's a kind of combination of gesture and geometry, which I'm interested in. And um, we've talked before about how I've done a little writing about this work and how, to me, the work feels like uh, it's like a Sunday night after a, a drag show and everyone's makeup is smeared and everyone's voice is a little raspy, which is something I've been thinking about lately. It's just like a ridiculous way to describe paintings. But for me, it's true. I think about like smeared makeup and just, um, you know, the idea of drag, the idea of performance, the idea of queerness. and the body, and for me, drag is about a hyper-awareness of the body because you're, you're trying to make your body behave in a different way or look a different way, and so you have to be aware of what you're starting with. And I don't do drag. I've never done drag. Who knows what the future holds with the beard? <laughs> Tricky. Um, but I do think there's something about that kind of uh, gender bendiness, almost. You know. I often get people thinking that the work is made by a female identified artist and I'm a male identified artist and that's a really interesting glitch to me that I think is uh, sort of something I'm exploring more and more. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I know that um, sometimes, you know, that uh, as a woman I'm like all choked up because it's a lot to say. <laughs> you know, sometimes you're like, you get told like, oh, a woman made this and it can feel not so good. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't feel, you don't have that fresh feeling when, no. <laughs> when someone <laughs> says that to you, you're like, oh, okay, well, I don't know how to take that. You know, like you throw like a girl. So yeah. It's like all that kind of stuff that kind of comes up. You're like, oh, but you know, so when, you know, someone says that to you, you know, do you, are you like, ha ha ha, I fooled them or <laughs> how do you, you know, how does that feel? It's a good question. I mean, it feels a lot of my heroes are abstract painters who are women. You know, people like Joanne Greenbaum, Charlene von Heil, um, Laurel Sparks. You know, people that uh, that I think 
are breaking a different set of rules in a way, you know, are, are breaking a set of rules that were launched by the Abex painters and made it really hard for women um, to make work in that vein in that time period. So for me, I take it as a great compliment when someone says that it looks like your work is made by a woman. I also think like, what? <laughs> what does that even mean? But like, I mean, what body parts am I using that I would, it's just like, eh. so, um, you know, I think for me it's a great compliment and it's, you know, it is tied into the queerness and tied into the sexuality and tied into the idea that I think in a way what people are saying is that the body is involved somehow, you know, the body is involved in making these and they're kind of human sized. Um, so yeah, I think it's, but yes, a great compliment, always. Oh, good. I'm like, high five! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, that's awesome. And um, is there anything coming up for you, or are you yes? Oh, yeah. All sorts of weird stuff coming up. Um, there is, I am going to a space called Bikini Wax in Mexico awesome. City. <laughs> it is, <laughs> let's just like have a moment with the fact that this space is called Bikini Wax. Okay. It's in um, a house. It's a domestic space. And I'm going um, sometime in January or February. We think it's going to open with the Mexico City Art Fair um, and doing a site specific work, which is something I've been doing more and more of. So the house has these um, kind of ugly, kind of amazing floor tiles. Yeah. And I'm going to do a riff on them on all of the walls of the public spaces in the house. So awesome. it'll be kind of like a big line drawing painting thing. Um, so that's happening. And then um, the artist Will Hutnick and I are doing a show at Demo Projects in Springfield, Illinois in March, which will also be site specific, but collaboratively site specific. Oh, that's great. And I'm sure we can stay tuned on your website. Stay tuned. <laughs> we'll stay tuned. Stay tuned. MarkJoshuaEpstein.com. All right. We'll put it here. <laughs> All right. Awesome. So fancy. <laughs> so right here. Right here. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's awesome. My pleasure. Great to talk to you. You too. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, everyone.